What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool news and football news video where we will talk about three main topics. The first one is that the Premier League is in advanced talks with the UK government over football returning in June behind closed doors if it's safe to do so and the Premier League players will be in a very strict uh, quarantine until then. The second topic that we will talk about in detail is that FIFA will extend this season indefinitely which basically means that FIFA will say to every country around the world you can finish the se this season whenever it's safe to do so in your country and then we will work it out when next season can start and the third uh, topic of course is uh, the ongoing issue of Liverpool FC for allowing some staff and we will have some updates on that but Liverpool still haven't res reserved reversed that decision so what do you think about that and let me know what do you think about all three topics in the comments below let's have a discussion and let's talk about the first topic the mirror and the daily mail and various other English newspapers are reporting that the plans are that the Premier League matches will be played behind closed doors beginning in June if it's safe to do so. Of course the health and safety of everyone is there of ut utmost importance at this time but uh, this is a football channel and you guys want to hear when you can watch football again and when Liverpool can try and win the, pa the Premier League title mathematically and even if it's behind closed doors I will be still very very happy to see that because uh, uh, there were of course talks of the season beginning uh, um, in uh, September, October, November or even talks of the, the season being null and void I think that is a very very unlikely scenario because the TV deal has uh, so much money still in it like Premier League clubs don't want to pay back uh, in total 750 million pounds so according to the Mirror newspaper the Premier League are at an advanced stage with the talks with the government over a turn for football in, uh, in June and this is a tentative agreement, a tentative green light for football to, begi to begin in June if it's safe to do so and uh, the top flight could resume behind closed doors after the 20 clubs mapped out a plan with senior officials, government officials on a resumption of matches uh, UK government officials are hopeful that this, uh, vi this virus will peak in the UK in the next few weeks and then they will sanction games under strict guidelines if it's safe to do so and the plan would see games being played under very strictly controlled conditions behind closed doors the league officials have also discussed extensive measures to keep the players in a sterile environment as much as possible limited contact with the wider, wider public so how this could work is that you have uh, hotels sealed off, sealed off from the public and just the footballers and maybe their close family will live in that hotel for the next one or two months after June until they can complete the Premier League season and that way basically you are closing that environment from the outside world and that would be of course a lot safer to do than just footballing wandering around out in the public uh, getting in contact with a lot of people and also of course before you put everybody in that uh, closed environment you could test everyone and of course they want to ensure that football fans don't try to attend games so there also have been talks with TV companies to extend the number of games that will be televised during June and after and so far you know before this uh, pandemic began there was uh, like 40, 45 games televised from the remaining 92 games but there are actually a serious consideration to have all 92 games televised just to keep people occupied at their home but of course you also want to prevent friend groups getting together for example Liverpool are on the brink of winning their first title in 30 years and you don't want 
10 Liverpool fans just getting together in a flat and watching the games and celebrating together. You still want to practice social distancing and self-isolating. So I'm not sure how they can prevent that, but of course maybe drum it into people not to visit each other and try to basically like control as much of the movement of people as possible in this uh, very very short period of time and of course if the situation gets word gets worse then the premier league will postpone that june date to july or august so uh, the june date is just at the moment a hypothetical scenario we i don't know exactly how how this uh, whole uh, thing will develop because it also depends on very much the individual and how much each people can stay at home and just try to avoid uh, getting into contact with as many people, uh, as few people as possible. So uh, I think that uh, June is a very optimistic scenario, but I'm really hopeful that, that uh, most people will stay at home and we can flatten the curve together and that's what I'm doing, that's what my girlfriend and me are doing, we are staying at home. So the current plan is to ramp up training uh, in the in May in the month of May and maybe have some uh, sort of uh, training camp with a closed environment again and with precautions taken so each and every player can uh, stay safe and not uh, get this virus because even if one player gets it 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 puts the whole operation in jeopardy, in my opinion. UEFA are also in separate talks over uh, resuming the Champions League and the Europa League. They could resume in August or September and of course next season will be delayed by a few months at least. Uh, they, that could start in October maybe or November, we don't know that yet. But another very very good news, especially for Liverpool fans, is that FIFA are set to extend this season and also the summer transfer window indefinitely and allow last minute contract negotiations for players who have deals running out on June the 30th for example at Liverpool Lalana and some other players contracts run out this season but if the season continues beyond June the 30th then FIFA are allowing those clubs to keep those players around until the season is officially over. I think most contracts don't uh, say until the season is over, but they say a special specific date. So that's why legally it's complicated. But if, if, if FIFA gives the green light to all contracts being extended, being able to be extended just by a few months, just until the season is officially completed, then I think that would solve a lot of issues and a lot of headaches. And this is very, very significant because apparently FIFA will confirm an indefinite extension to this season, which also means that every country will be given the power to determine when their own campaign will restart and also when it will be finished. The plans which could be announced in the next few days according to the Mirror and the Daily Mail means the concept of rendering the season null and void is even less likely to materialize as Premier League sides look to avoid paying back as I said a huge amount of money to TV companies and of course football is a money game and this is a lot about the money and football clubs don't want to pay back 750 million pounds in total to TV broadcasters uh, like Liverpool would have to pay back around 55 million pounds just for that four five six games uh, that they would have televised uh, between now and the end of the season and FIFA's plans have uh, relaxed this situation and also it allows countries and leagues flexibility in order to finish seasons whenever realistically possible and safe to do so. And in that same meeting on Friday, the 20 Premier League clubs of course released a statement saying that they would hold talks with their players over uh, accepting a 30% wage cut. And some Premier League clubs believe that the, the season would have to be finished behind closed doors anyway. And I just cannot see a scenario winter time, ne ne next winter. So I think that the only scenario is to play behind, play games behind closed doors, but at least you would have some for, sort of income for the clubs because of the TV deals in place 
and also fans would love to see football on their television I, I'm pretty sure in terms of the transfer window let's talk about that the current dates for the summer transfer window in England are from June 10th to September the 1st and this is now set to change with the season likely to run well into July maybe even into August and the English Football League said on, in a February that a, an agreement in principle, principle was also in place to return their deadline day to the end of August and uh, also FIFA will plan FIFA will announce plans to extend the transfer window indefinitely which means that whenever you can finish the season in your country you can move the transfer window forward by a few weeks or months depending on when your season your next season will start so let's say if next season starts in October then you could have the transfer window run from like um, the end of July or the end of August whenever you finish the season until the beginning of October so clubs would have still enough time to make transfers to adjust their squads and to set up new contracts for players and of course some football clubs in England are pretty concerned about extending contracts right now when there is no clear date for football's return especially if that will be costing them money with no income being generated via matches but if the Premier League can restart in July or August then that would help clubs know uh, what kind of uh, revenue streams they will have at least they would have uh, the TV deal uh, and they would have broadcasting revenues coming in so then they could at least move on with um, extending some contracts for example Liverpool might want to extend the contract of Wijnaldum maybe Lovren and other people we don't know that so how the UK government wants uh, the Premier League to complete the season is that uh, they would want a closed confined space where players would stay they would sleep eat train in these uh, confined spaces and also play the matches behind closed doors so stadiums hotels and training facilities would undergo undergo a deep clean before and then the players would effectively be in isolation with the hope of getting the season finished by mid-july or maybe even august and the july 16th is the current date of the end of the current tv deal for this season I don't think the Premier League season will be able to complete to be completed unless you start in uh, the beginning of June or in the middle of June and you play two or three games every week for each team which is doable because the Premier League has bigger squads but it would it would have a unique um, feel to it and basically you would have Premier League games being shown every day for a month month and a half I would personally love it if they can do it in a safe way uh, where the play players health and safety can be preserved and protected then I'm all for it because it would be like a football festival it would be like a World Cup tournament in the summer but with Premier League football how awesome would that be and I think many people need a lift uh, because times are really tough stressful mentally and uh, financially for many people myself included it's very tough and we just need a lift and football is a way of uh, escaping those everyday regular troubles and and you can take your mind off for just two hours and watch a game of football and enjoy the entertainment and i think many people really need this in their life and i i can't can't stress this enough i only want this to happen if it's safe to do so and if every player and every everybody involved are protected from getting this illness and but Premier League players of course have some major reservations about playing behind closed doors because of the risk of infection for them and their families and also the strain on emergency services but it is hoped that they may, may be open to different ideas if the if the crisis is in a much better place than right now clubs face having to pay different amounts in broadcast cash depending on how much they have received uh, and they could have to pay back potentially 50 55 million pounds some of the top clubs in england but even the smaller clubs i think the smallest amount is like 15 to 20 million pounds that clubs like norwich aston villa would have to pay back 
and that would really hit them hard financially, definitely. But Premier League clubs may be allowed to have bigger squads than the current 25. They may be lift, able to lift foreign quotas and be able to use all their players on the books to deal with the demand of trying to play 10 games in one month or one month and a half. And some clubs fear that fans may not be allowed back into matches before October and well into next season because of the ongoing health concerns. And even if the worst has happened, the government may be strict on whether stadiums can be opened again. Now let's talk about Liverpool FC and their decision to use the government to pay 80% of the staff, 200, around 200 uh, people who were uh, placed on a temporary leave or furlough as they call it in England. This is what Piers Morgan said, I, I really don't like the guy, but I agree with what he said about Liverpool. Liverpool Football Club built up such a good reputation in recent years on the Jurgen Klopp in winning the Champions League. This dynamic, wonderful team, everyone was proud, everyone loved what Liverpool were standing for. And that is all gone, because their billionaire owners in America decided that this was the time in the year when they made 42 million pound profit, that they were going to furlough their staff at Liverpool Football Club. And also Dominic King, who is a re very respected journalist, said this, Fenway Sports uh, Group's decision to furlough Liverpool staff is dreadful. It has shredded the goodwill built up by Jurgen Klopp and his players over the last 18 months and there will be no sympathy from neutrals if they are denied the title now. Wow, that is very very strong words. I'm not sure because this wasn't the players or the Liverpool staff who made this decision. Obviously it was the owners. And the owners are not the club, the fans and the players are what make the club um, what it is today, not the owners. As Bill Shankly said, the owners are just there to write the checks and uh, the fans, the players and um, the manager is the most, are the most important people at the club. Liverpool have been widely criticized by fans, including myself and rightfully so. I, what I don't understand is the, is the timing of this announcement as well that uh, like uh, it came out in the newspapers that Henderson was setting up a fund between all Premier League teams and uh, Henderson was talking to all Premier League club captains about setting up a fund to donate money to help the NHS financially in this time of need. And on the same day, Liverpool came out with that statement of furloughing staff and I just don't understand the timing of it. And Melissa Reddy uh, wrote an article in The Independent which hits the nail on the head. A supporter provider provided the perfect analogy on Twitter. It's like going to the food bank when you can still comfortably afford to go to the supermarket and buy food. It's like going to the food bank and getting free food uh, from the government when you have m more than enough money to buy food for yourself. And basically that takes away from somebody else getting food from the food bank. And that's the cross of, a crux of why this feels wrong and why the widespread criticism about Liverpool FC has been right and they still haven't reserved the, uh, reversed that decision. And I'm not sure if they will ever, but if they w won't reverse this decision, then the, the PR disaster will be immense. Because even if Liverpool win the title, many, many football fans will uh, harshly criticize Liverpool about this decision. And rightfully so, I have to admit. And it, it's really painful for me to see everyone say, slagging off my beloved club. But this time, I have to be honest, it's fully justified.